you'll be very proud of us. We used hashtag throughout <laughs> Gallup Summit, yeah. throughout Gallup Strengths Day, throughout Partnership. It's it, so funny when she takes the time to explain it, like hashtag strategic hashtag. I always feel so uncool when we do that. Well, but most of our, <laughs> I was we're saying, explaining our hashtag. Most of our coordinators <laughs> yeah, don't know. know what I we're know, doing. I know. <laughs> Or might not think it's a positive gesture. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if you ever see Tess do that, back it's away. like <laughs> back away slowly. <laughs>
um, presentation. Um, I like this a lot. What went well? Where did you get stuck? What would you do differently? Where did you witness impact? We asked our strengths panel yesterday, which consisted of uh, Jane, who's a superintendent at Hershey Public Schools, um, Anne, who's the coordinator, teammates coordinator in Blair, and Terry, who's the teammates coordinator at Millard. We asked them to talk about how they implemented strengths within their um, school, within their chapter, and we asked them those questions. Mm -hmm. So we thought we would be in the spirit of transparency and vulnerability, talk about from our perspective yesterday, um, what went well, where we got stuck, what we might do differently, impact. Yeah. Here's what went well from my perspective. Everybody was there. We had 54 people yesterday. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. High level of engagement. Mm -hmm. That's one piece for me. Um, I think what went well for me is we took um, kind of separated groups at one point and did like a 101, 201. It was really a trial thing, so we didn't make it huge. We grabbed people that have been doing strengths with teammates for a long time, and we know them well. We know that they have a good base knowledge of strengths in teammates, and so we kind of grabbed them, and I worked with them on some more like leadership development, more naming and claiming of strengths, but then also what is that, what kind of leader does that make you? And I think um, despite it being kind of clunky transition, and at one point, one of the exercises I had him do, I realized I had never walked a group through it before. <laughs> so I explained it, lots of people had questions, I didn't explain it well, and that's where I'm like, every time I doubt communication is 17 for me, I'm like, okay, there we go. <laughs> Humble myself because I did not communicate very clearly on the direction. So even though that was a little clunky, um, I still think they walked away with some really meaningful work that they all did on what leadership looks like, mm -hmm. how it looks like uniquely in them. And it was, it was so great for me to see that too, to know all of these, these things that I did, one of the things that I created from scratch, but the other two are things that are super easy to do. They all talked about doing it with mentors and mentees even. Um, how can we apply this just as a match activity, which is not a level I was thinking at. I was thinking personal, professional development, mm -hmm. investing in these coordinators, to maximize their impact and they took it to a whole other level which was really fun. They were all honest building each other up so I thought that was really cool to see. Another thing that went well for me, um, I highlighted our new Strengths Dropbox um, which I now have a four page almost table of contents listing every single thing that's on the Dropbox. So the table of contents is also at the start of the Dropbox. You have access to this, I'll send the link out again. So when people are saying, well, what do I do with this after a strengths day? Or how can I introduce something simply in a board meeting or maybe a display of strengths? You've got it and it's listed there and people were very appreciative of that. Along with, um, Tess and I had written this um, from the annual report, um, a little bit about what Teammates is, how it works, um, why we do it. Um, and. This is a great resource if you're thinking about how do I introduce this to my board? How do I introduce it to someone else? Got great feedback on this. And then we also designed a best practices on how to implement strengths, what the coordinator um, and board role is, what to meet strengths team, that would be Tessa and I, what we provide, um, what the considerations are, technology, um, and just kind of an overall why we do it and the impact and the chapter requirements. So these are new documents and I heard really good response on that. Um, I'll send these out for those of you who weren't there. Um, actually, I'll send you the link to the Dropbox and you can print them. Um, it's me teaching um, myself how to not send the PDF but just point you to where it is. Um, all of these are on the Dropbox and I think they'll be great resources. So that went well. Um, I think, um, I'm trying to think what else went well. I love that people were in their region. I think it was really helpful and we got some good feedback from all of our regional coordinators that it was very helpful for them to be able to connect with their regions more intentionally and even like the smaller tables versus the larger tables regardless I think that day helps you connect in more than just like partnership is wonderful and there's a lot of learning involved but a lot of it is let me teach you about the policies and the changes and things like that and so I love Strengths Day because it helps us to get to know coordinators at a personal level. Yes. Even our, our corporate, um, wonderful corporate supporters that were there and some mm -hmm. people from HBE and Arbor Bank that came and getting to know people at um, a real level and even though we definitely talked a lot about the logistics of implementing it and creating a plan and what their strengths looks like in a coordinator role, a, a board role, it still helps you get to know people uniquely 
and that helps me be very it helps me be much more connected to people just listening to that even if I don't have a conversation with them being able to hear that um, helps me to yeah, have that kind of personal connection with them so I'm gonna shift us because um, I think we talked a little bit about where we got stuck but shift mm -hmm. to what we would do differently and based on what you just said I feel exactly the same way mm -hmm. I would go back to us doing an activity that um, we had heard from coordinators that they looked forward to which is the who are you what do you love what do you need and drawing that metaphor um, I had someone tell me that they had thought about in the morning what they were going to, to sketch out as their metaphor for that activity um, I think what we wanted to do is try something different um, and we will in the future but I think we'll go back to really hearing people from that deeper level yeah. um, with the who are you, what do you love, what do you need. Mm -hmm. um, it's a time consuming activity so when we looked at um, our registration we kind of tried to think about what could we do with reasonable time but I think for sure sitting together as a region mm -hmm. to hear the who are you, what do you love, what do you need yeah. would be really um, a deeper connection. Yeah. It almost killed me to not hear every single person's yeah. success of this week. I think that was hard too for us because we were mulling around and trying to get things coordinated um, and since it wasn't a whole large group, I didn't feel, I, I could see they were personally connecting really well, but I didn't get very much right. personal connection out, outside of the 201 group. That and I think did. that's how we teach. Mm -hmm. We teach based on, based on what we hear. I borrow your adaptability based on what we hear. Mm -hmm. My empathy woo picks up on mm, this person doesn't yet, you know, really yeah. understand what mm -hmm. um, their number one or number two blend looks like, or I'm brand new to strengths. What, what does this really mean? Yeah. And then your adaptability just rises up when you hear me sense. Okay, we gotta shift this, mm -hmm. and that's how we teach. Yeah. We need to go back to that. Because yeah. that works, yeah, um, and I group. think um, the large group, at least some conversation, yeah. we didn't have one time. Where they, where we knew every single person. Yes. Yeah. Which, Voice. which. So then, what we do too. differently? Oh my gosh, we really wanted people to be able to strike spot well. So we had this whole idea of people get to know each other well in the room, and of course, our frame of reference. This is where my context is at a fault. It totally is because it's a blind spot in some cases because my frame of reference completely for that day is the who are you, what do you love, is the large group introducing yourself, the focus on you with everyone. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, we could randomly assign. You know, we talked about this whole system of randomly assigning and then we never took the time to make sure everybody knew everyone in the room. And so we were constantly thinking about how can we do that. And there was one time um, uh, Zach from HBE came yeah. up to me and he was like, who is this person? And, oh, and, and half a dozen people asked me. Well, I had so many people explain it that he was like, gosh, I don't know. I haven't, and this was like at three o'clock. And he's like, I haven't even had a conversation with her. I don't know if I can write it. And I'm like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We know we, this is a huge we, we blew that. that. We was totally blew that. We didn't do that well. Because <laughs> last year it went well when we put everybody's names the up. The sticky notes. And but then everyone got to know who they were. And it was kind of done based on how they were seated. Yes. And so as someone was talking, you could go up and put a sticky note up. I love that. I still have all my sticky notes. I do too. We're going back to that. Ooh. Um, we, and we were, it was just the two of us. Yeah. trying to do a lot of implementation. We need to yeah. better plan for that. I do want to say, um, when I talk about impact, if you gave me a bucket drop, if you sent me a text, if you um, sent me an email, those things really, um, they really matter to me. And um, I'm always trying to better myself as a, a trainer, but also to extend impact. And when whoever wrote this, and they didn't sign it, but they were assigned to me, and I'm really trying to figure out whose handwriting this is, I don't think it's yours. No, I'm pretty sure it's Wenty. Is it really? I'm pretty sure it's really Wenty. If this is you, this is awesome because it's. I signed mine. I signed oh, I mine, and so I love anonymous Becca drops, but I absolutely loved each and every one of these, and I, I got a handful over the past last three days, and your um, card to me meant a lot, a whole lot, and. Um, one of the things that came up yesterday, we were talking about, um, so we had at the closing part of our day was um, a mentor who came and talked about his um, mentee's strengths and how he brought, he reminded his mentee about his strengths at difficult times of his life. And I was chatting with his wife and his wife said, 
you know, Marie still has that graduation note that you sent. She said, do you understand the impact? You know, we were talking about, do we even understand the impact of words? Mm -hmm. So for me to think about the fact that I might write two or three sentences to someone on a note that they might, and I do, I have every single one of these that I've ever received, it matters. So this, that chart paper that we did, mm -hmm. you know, those things matter. So what we would do differently, this would be more intentional, um, mm -hmm. but I want to thank, if it's you, Julie, I want to thank the person who gave this to me because it's, a, it's an yeah. awesome one. Good, awesome. Yeah. Um, Im impact, yeah. I, um, I, last three days, my voice has been crackly, and by that I mean weepy more than usual. I think I'm getting older. I think I'm tired. I think there are a lot of things. Um, I miss my kids. They're on a vacation and with their dad and I miss them tremendously. I don't know. It just, right here, it's been sitting. And there you were don't times... don't have a notebook DVD anymore. <laughs> Someone took a notebook. Um, I, I don't know, but it, it just at different times during the day when I started to, and I hate crying in front of people. Hate it. And when it would start when I was talking, I had to, you know, kind of pause and get myself together, but people can tell. Mm -hmm. And the people who are like me got tears in their eyes. Of course. You can't look at Sean Mayer at all. <laughs> I, she love always has I know, tears but I, I do. I love looking at her because I'm like, you get it. Yeah. So during training certification on Monday, there was someone who was, oh yeah, getting teary, and I thought, uh, oh, uh, oh, look away from you. But at the same time, I thought, for me, that's how I know my words make ripples. Um, Don't cry. I know. Jeez. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I miss Shane a lot, and Shane talked to me and taught me constantly about impact. And so I see that. I see that, and I witness that, and I feel really, really honored, completely blessed and lucky um, to do the work that I do. Even though the last three days have been a lot, a lot. little little sleep, um, little sleep. <laughs> lots of on the go and planning, um, but to uh, wake up this morning and think those were some really powerful three days, yeah. lots of ripples, yeah. lots of impact, um, you can see that. Yeah, and I think I have to like constantly think of that because you know I think both of us are like, gosh, we have this one shot and this one day, and yes. you feel like, God, oh, how do we blow that? Yeah. yeah. And we are we are really bad at we're bludgeoning so, ourselves. We are so bad at it. And I'm like, God, talk about strengths based. We're like right. nitpicking everything we could have done differently. Well, you rocked. Yeah. And you rocked. Oh my god. Side gosh. note, Tess rocked our summit presentation. Um, I try to pride myself in being funny. I got nothing on you. Oh, stop. You were hilarious, especially at so the fun. end, and it came out of nowhere. And it then, came out of nowhere for me. Too. And then I never heard it before, so I start laughing, like my really loud laugh. The other thing I want to strengths about you, and I don't know what it is, but just joy, you were laughing during, anytime anybody said anything funny on Monday and Tuesday, during breakouts, oh, yeah. during, you laugh. When you really want to laugh, it's, it's a hard, loud laugh, and yeah. usually no one else is. <laughs> And you get something that And then I'd be like, there were multiple times where it would just come out and I'd be like, okay, how are you? And then I'd look over, because I was going on the other side of the room, I'd look over and yep. Tess is laughing. If you earned a Tess laugh, um, it's kind of like my friend Amy, my friend Amy Harris. If she, she'll laugh at, you know, like, ha, ha polite, but if she really laughs, she starts <laughs> coughing. And so if you get Amy to cough, it's like the ultimate, um, Oh, yeah. I start funny. gasping for air yes. when it gets to so that I could point. hear you over there, and I kind of looked over a couple times thinking, I missed it. Um, so we wanted to model that. Yep. Model our openness, our vulnerability, and the fact that it's very easy, and sometimes having a strengths-based lifestyle, living in a strengths-based culture, um, whatever that might look like, we talk about focusing on what, on what is good and right, but we are hardwired for spotting weaknesses. Yes. 
And I think that it's something that both of us have been, and, and you a lot longer, have been studying strengths, have been talking about strengths, but our natural default is to still talk about weaknesses. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure that you all know that as you are working on this, don't get discouraged. Right. Don't beat your, like, you will beat yourself up. I promise you will because we always are our worst critics. And so knowing that we just went through the same experience um, of beating ourselves up, but knowing that... Um, it takes intentionality to then revert to a strict space mindset of what impact you know right. did we witness? What was good and right about that day? Right. Um, and you know, me being me, you might think with context this isn't the case, but I want to make sure that we are open to change and willing mm -hmm. to make things better and um, willing to to modify the day. Um, and I think that we took a big risk this year, and it didn't land 100% like we wanted it to. But I think there were some changes that were really good changes. Um, and some things that we learned. And I think the key piece is knowing when to, where you need to, where you're below the line. Um, when you think about your brain and you think about the anxiety and the beat yourself up kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, what do you need to get out of that? And I think honestly, we both kind of knew today, we needed to debrief immediately about it yeah. to get back in the strength-based focus. Yeah, yeah. Because if I wouldn't have debriefed with you, I think I would have had this mulling around and been below yeah. the line about it and just yeah. kind of pummeling myself for, you didn't get this right, you didn't do this right. And yet when we sit and can strength spot each other and recognize and witness, um, that helps us to get back to where we are. It's practice, yeah. like everything. So we wanted to model this so that you know, even though this is what we do yeah. for our jobs, this, we need practice in it. We need practice. Yep. The other thing we wanted to do is to help us uh, because of the way that our day is set up. We got some good time working on purpose statement, but like, excuse me, like we talked about, um, this is a kind of a lifelong process of discovering it, of mulling it over. So we wanted to model um, a conversation uh, of almost debrief or taking your purpose statement a step further with you all. Um, we'll send it in the follow-up email um, for Jen and Millie as well as the follow-up email for the Strengths Day, which will include this Jen and Millie. Um, but we wanted to work through this because um, we, we got the opportunity to really write and maybe share and maybe think about our purpose in terms of our strengths plan and our strengths, but we think it's um, really important to to make sure that we're connecting it back to our strengths and how they align and maybe how they conflict with one another but also continue to know that this is this lifelong process this continual learning of how does my my purpose align with my talents align with my engagement align with um, my role so we just yeah wanted to model this. So the purpose statement um, that we made reference to was one that again Tess and I learned at Gallup Summit um, from Kayla Taylor um, we've got this handout, it's a great one. She also has a link to her website. Um, I will send this out. Um, what I'd like for you to do, Tess, is just kind of talk through the um, highway lane vehicle piece. And then what we want to do is, for those of you who had the chance to complete it at Gallup Strengths Day, um, for you to have the opportunity to focus a little bit more about it. But for those of you who have not done it yet, do this in a slow, meaningful way. And also, um, we had to kind of pump the brakes on a few people who wanted to super speed through and get to this right away. We're still developing our purpose statement. Yeah, We're still thinking about how to put these words um, and sentences together in a meaningful way. Yep, so this activity really it helps you narrow down. It's not a an all-encompassing tool that will help you get to that end result of your purpose statement, but it's, we think it's a pretty robust tool um, that, that will help you get closer and closer. And so um, really it starts off by having you circle as many or cap it off at about 10 words of your interests. And your interests are those things that, that spark your curiosity, that you love to learn about or study. Maybe it aligns with your major, um, if you completed a degree, or it aligns with when you think back to your fifth grade self, what were your, your favorite topics? And your, high, your interests there are really, um, when we, you think about the fact that there are so many different ways to get from one destination to another, um, multiple highways, multiple freeways, really your interests are the actual highway that you choose to drive on, right? Uh, and then it moves on to your audience, and those are the people that you're serving. So you could be on your highway and be interested in education, for example, but there might be four or five lanes, or it might be two lanes, or there's you know elementary, middle, high, higher ed, education in terms of teacher and faculty. Um, so uh, the audience, who you are serving, who you're drawn to serve, is really the lane that you choose to drive in. 
And then you move to the back, um, and in the same um, model as the last two, you circle those that interest you. And these are actions or strengths as verbs. So this is really where your strengths come into play. These words here aren't explicitly Gallup strengths words, the talent themes, but they're uh, modeled based on those 34 themes. And so when you think about getting on the right highway, then getting in the right lane, the uh, strengths that you use, the actions that you take, are then the vehicle you choose to drive in. So if you think of a Prius versus a, a F350, <laughs> you're gonna get, you're gonna drive down that lane on that highway mm -hmm. in a very different way, with much different gas mileage also, um, depending on the vehicle that you choose to use. And so you circle those again, and then you move down to this purposeful work table where you try and isolate five from each of the categories, and you list them out your interests, your audience, and then your actions and strengths as verbs. And once you have done all of that, like we said, we probably spend about a half an hour um, and 20 minutes maybe just working through each of those sections. And then at the, um, at the bottom is where that purpose statement, they have sentence starters. You don't have to use these, but it's a great way to try and combine um, all three of those elements to help you create a purpose statement based on what you're interested in or passionate about, what your audience or focus might be, and then how you go about serving them around that passion. I even think when you looked at the sentence starters, you could completely strength spot yeah. around what people mm -hmm. chose for their sentence starter. Yeah. Um, all of these, really. Um, and yeah. a thing to note is that there's a word or phrase that's not listed here, um, add it. So for example, um, when I was looking at some different um, areas for my lane or my audience, under children, I, it says young children, I just circled children and said mentees. Um, up here where it says adults, um, or over here where it says adults, I think I added mentors. Mm -hmm. um, and then families was really what it, it drew me to mm -hmm. um, when I started to. The hard part of this for me was after you identify 10, then you go back and you have to identify five. Yeah. And it's hard, mm -hmm. I think. It was hard yeah. to choose 10 for me and then even harder to choose to yeah. choose five to put that together with the work table. Yeah. And it was, um, it was hard for me, I think. I thought a lot about like, my interests and passions or what I, what I do well, what I love to do, uh, my strengths, but I never really thought about the audience. And I think that was the one that tripped me up the most, of, like who do I serve? So I thought then about the demographics of the people I serve, like the young adults at church and the mentors and mentees and our program coordinators and things like that. But it was a little difficult to think about that audience, and I think I had the least amount to circle on that one. I was just thinking that um, someone had asked me yesterday, what's the difference between this as a purpose statement versus writing your mission statement? Because a lot of people have been assigned that, particularly if you've been in a leader, leadership development course. Mm -hmm. I think there's a difference. Mm -hmm. um, mission statement for me was a little more around what does my work do? Mm -hmm. Purpose statement for me is more around what am I? Who are you? Who am I? Born mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. What, am, what is my being mm -hmm. um, intended? What's my purpose yeah. on this earth? Yeah. Um, so I had that question come up yesterday. I wanted to make sure that I, yeah. I answered That's that. Good. That's good. So then from there, you really create this purpose statement. And, and we really guided people through stripping, your, stripping yourselves of labels or any identities that have been placed on you. So if you're a parent or um, a spouse or your job title at work, think just innately because a purpose statement really is the reason for being. Your purpose is a reason for being. So thinking about transcending all labels and all roles, um, really what is that innate reason that you believe that you are here? The why, the why behind um, really a lot of your life, a lot of your actions. Um, yeah. So from there, do you feel like you have a purpose statement? Uh, kind of, but I want you to read yours because I can't find where I wrote mine. Ooh, oh, so I do. I have it. Okay, you go first. I can't read my old. Okay. Please. I am here. I am here to support families in building relationships in order to increase engagement. That's good. I am here to support families in building relationships in order to increase engagement. That's too many words. So when you think about that, how do you think your strengths align with your purpose statement? Empathy just loves supporting families. Because I can't narrow it, also the woo, I can't narrow it down to just kids or just women yeah. or just adults or just, yeah, yeah, yeah. the world. The world. The world. The world. Yeah, I, I am here to support the world. 
through building relationships in order to increase engagement. So relationships, mm -hmm. totally. that's a big one, yes. totally, and that totally aligns with your strengths. What else? Um, you connectedness have is not in, on my, uh, it's here. It yeah. rises, yeah. and it's rising in this activity. Something like this I love because um, my communication loves the words, the formulation of a sentence, the formulation of a sentence that I can hold to. I love mantras. Um, this I can get, yeah. I can get my head around and I can repeat it and I could go back to when I'm having a difficult day or when I'm making a decision, looking back at this, mm -hmm. does this decision support that? Does this action support my, my purpose statement? That's good. That's good. Which strengths or strengths blends enhance or help you fulfill your purpose? For sure, communication, empathy, strategic. Mm -hmm. I'm thoughtful about it. The reason I write my blog is is for that very reason. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm, that's good. Do you feel like any of your strengths might get in the way of fulfilling your purpose? Woo. Um, for sure, because I get a little caught up in do people like it versus does it have a purpose? Does it have a reason? Yeah. Um, can give too many words. So. Um, what has purpose looked like in different seasons of your life? So when you think about, you've had a lot of different seasons. Mm -hmm. um, when you were young, like in school, in college, thinking about becoming a mom, um, in marriage. I think that um, for a while I didn't, I was seeking purpose, but not knowing my true north about it, mm -hmm. and not being authentic. So when I was trying to be someone who I wasn't, it was really hard to find my innate purpose because you're just essentially running from it. Um, it wasn't until I went through some difficult stuff that I got real with who I was and could find that um, where I was meant to be. That's good. That's good. So uh, let me see. How is it being fulfilled today in your current role, job, personal life? So when I get to put together match support in academies and help facilitate learning opportunities for others or send people a link or five links to things that I think they might be interested in, that just honors that. Mm -hmm. My, um, I love what I get to do every day, um, both in the personal, you know, the blogging and my work with Wild and the things that I'm, I'm trying to um, really help people have a clearer path to their purpose because I spent so much time going the wrong way about it. Mm -hmm. So I love what I get to do every day to help people to get to, get to that. That's good. That's good. So I want to encourage you to review your purpose statement. If you want to make any modifications or changes to language. Um, and I then just did. You just did. Support the world. Yeah, support the world. And then um, share it with those that are closest to you and ask them for feedback. Okay. Okay. You ready? I don't know, but we'll do it afraid. Be I, brave, be brave. <laughs> I know, I told people to do that yesterday and I'm not good at it myself. <laughs> I posted about it today ah, on Instagram. Ooh, I'll have to look. Um, so I think a little bit of what I've come to, and I am, again, modifying and changing this as needed, but I am here, we both started with the same starter. I am here to empower people in their personal and spiritual development in order for them to become their most authentic self. <laughs> Sorry. Don't cry. I mean, seriously. <laughs> well, Tess, honestly. I mean, that's who you are. That's who you are to others. That's who you are in all relationships. That's who you are. <sighs> How do your strengths align with your purpose statement? Hello! My goodness. How do your strengths align with How yours? do I? I'm going to answer it. Yes. Um, I think uh, personal and spiritual development is very, very intimate, mm -hmm. if that's the right word to use. Sure. Um, it's So I think, I don't, and recently I've just been seeing more and more of my individualization. I don't talk about it a whole lot. I know it's the way I relate to people. I love one-on-ones -on -ones with people. Love to get to understand how people tick and what what's... I'm just curious about people, um, and so I think that definitely comes out a lot, um, and in doing so, when I help 
I think a part, a big, big part of personal and spiritual development is recovering and healing from wounds of the past. And so that is definitely my context blended with that, like getting to know people's past and, and helping them work through it and break free from, from things that are holding them down. And um, so I think that is definitely there. Um, strategic, I think I can like always see people where people can go, like all the options available and, and help guide them in the, to the best one. Mm -hmm. um, my learner, I like learning about people. I love learning about personal and spiritual development, like just in my own life. I'm always, I think I counted, I was talking, we were talking at partnership, the staff had dinner together, you know, after day one, um, when kind of everyone had left, we were prepping for day two, and um, since I got rid of, I got rid of my TV and unsubscribed to pretty much everything, um, like no Netflix or Hulu, I've had a cable in a long time. And so I, um, and I was like, I'm just gonna spend all my time reading. Time I would normally just come home and be like, oh, I'll just turn on the TV for some noise or whatever, I've been doing lots of podcasts not that I did before, but a lot more, um, and then also been reading a lot. And I think um, since January, I think I counted, I've gotten through 21 books, um, or 22 yeah. books. Um, <laughs> and I have to like recount, um, but, and, but most of them are on like theories of personal development or spiritual development. Um, some of them have been for school, uh, but they've all been incredible and um, on spiritual disciplines or, um, trying to think what I've, um, like rhythms of life is a lot of what I've been reading about. And, um, and so I think that that definitely is my learner is I love to learn about that kind of stuff. And then part of my learning is then to teach that to someone. I love to teach people about what I'm learning or if it's a new spiritual discipline, oh, let's try this um, meditating on the scripture together. You know, mm -hmm. I did that with them. I'm, I'm going on a, um, a mission trip with my church in a few weeks to Guatemala and we do team meetings and, and I'm one of the co-leaders for the trip. And so we have um, practiced silence, silent meditation on the word. And, um, and we've done, we're up to like seven minutes, I think was our last meeting we did of complete silence collectively so that's great things like that so I think that that's a lot of how how they align but also how I use them to kind of help and fulfill that I think your learner allows you to be a phenomenal teacher mm. your openness to constant learning yeah. um, mm. I also I have some thoughts on individualization that we'll do off camera um, <laughs> I'll tell you in a second um, what strengths might get in the way of your purpose um, I think because, and especially when I open up the rest of my set, like my top ten, they're all they're almost all head strengths. I have a few, like there, a lot of them are strategic thinking strengths, and I have, I definitely have a lot of relationship building out there. Those are the only two domains I'm in, but I have all all of the strategic thinking except for two are in my top ten, and so my head just gets in the way a lot, and I very easily get frustrated with people, um, and so I think that's hard when I am not in a regular mode of connecting with people, when I get too much in my head, and maybe that is strategic, maybe that's my intellection, um, or my ideation, like seven and eight for me, um, that I just keep, like, I can get so much in here that it's hard to connect here. Like I heard a, a quote that um, your, the distance between your head and the heart is the longest seven inches, um, which is a bit of an oxymoron, because seven inches is always seven inches, but I love that phrase because it's so hard for me to move things from my head to my heart sometimes. Um, but things, the days like yesterday and days like the day before when I got to talk about the impact of data and introduce the new dashboards like that help connect my heart mm -hmm. back to everything that was going on in my head. So, And I think, I hope that you know that the relationships you build, um, people look for that from you. So I know when you write something or when you share something with me that there's a lot of thought in it. So the next question, how's your purpose, how has your purpose looked in different seasons, stages of your life? Hmm. I think, especially when I was in college, it was a lot of encouraging my friends to find more meaning than just, I mean, I was in a sorority, I was in a, you know, Creighton is a religious college or a Catholic Jesuit institution, but there's a lot of partying that goes on, a lot of people focused on um, things other than 
school or just focused on school because it really there's a lot of high achieving people there and so I think like I I was able to tap into some just awesome like um groups like one of my one of my favorite things my senior year I got to do an Ignatian wisdom group which was all on the the spiritual wisdom of Saint Ignatius and learning about kind of the the deeper meaning to a lot of life and a lot of the things we go through and so just being able to encourage people in that I think um, was really just really a lot of the way I did that and even within my within my sorority I started a bible study and a, um, a group of girls that got together and prayed for each other and so I think that definitely manifested like in mm -hmm. that way there mm -hmm. um, and then also just within my own department within the social sciences I got to be like a peer mentor and I'd encourage as many people as I knew to study anthropology because everyone at Creighton is like pre-med and I'm like okay whatever but you can get into medical school with a medical anthropology degree <laughs> and there's a medical anthropology major and I was like how much different and well-rounded will you be versus a biology major biology oh, pre-med like hear you. be a medical anthropology per med <laughs> so specialized yes specialized. individualization yes um, <laughs> so what about now what about <laughs> um how is your purpose being fulfilled today in your present life um, i um i think empowerment i i love the fact that i got to see so many people have ownership over their numbers and dashboards um, at partnership, people questioning data, which at first I have to like lay my ego aside and say they're not questioning me or, or my competence or anything like that. They are wanting to be invested and wanting to really know the numbers. And right. I'm like, that's when I came around to that point. Um, it was just really good to, to say they want to know how these numbers were run and where they came from and how they can improve. And I think that was really good. Um, and um, I think through a lot of what we do with strengths, the coaching that I get to do with staff members, with program coordinators, really is about empowering people in their personal journey. Um, and then I get to do a lot of coaching with my church too on strengths and how strengths and spiritual giftings align really well together. And I think that definitely is personal and spiritual development. So um, yeah, I think so many things. I think a lot of in my friendships, I. I have a friend that, um, one of my good friends, she's working through a lot of um, really hard things in her past and um, trying to, to find healing from things that were abuse and um, really negative things that she didn't have a choice in, right? She was born into and um, and so, and she has told me, she's like, you push me and sometimes I really don't want you to push me but I really need to be pushed, right? And I think that's a lot of, I'm pretty frank with people. Um, and, and fairly honest and, and getting to see where they can grow and develop. Um, because I know that once she gets to the other side of that and pushes through that, she will become her most authentic self. She will be able to share. She will be able to be vulnerable. She'll be, have a greater sense of wholeness as a result. So I hope just in that example, you see that the seven inch difference mm -hmm. is something that we need from you, the world mm -hmm. needs from you. Mm -hmm. um, because you can be frank and you can be direct and you can from a place of here, but we know it's with the intention of this. Mm. So we hope that you will try these out. Um, I'll send this out, it'll also be on the Dropbox link. Um, this is a great resource, great opportunity to talk about purpose, great way to think about where are you today? Yeah. How can you align yourself, realign? I mean, I think all of us are, are ikigai, which is the phrase that we learned about. It's the Japanese term for um, meaning or purpose and meaning. What is it exactly? The real the meaning, reason, for, reason for being, reason for being. I think we're all searching for that at different times. Um, for me, I want to thank everybody who's been part of the last three days of chaos mm -hmm. because you reminded me of my ikigai. Ikigai, ikigai. I think icky guy. Icky guy. Talked about an icky. It's it. Like, okay, so icky grade, guy. Guys are icky. You know, an icky guy. <laughs> I want it to sound so much more pure than that. So <laughs> the. You Sorry, have reminded me <laughs> of my purpose in the last three days. They have been full. They have been um, full of challenge, full of practice, full of learning. But I really want to say thank you. I especially want to say thank you to all of my... I had, I had amazing bucket drops, not just from people that um, intentionally gave them or um, were from my work, but from my friends and my family who said, how are you doing today? How did today go? Mm -hmm. um, I know this is a big week for you, um, and I just want to say thank you for that because not only is it reminding me of purpose, it's made me grateful um, that other people support that. Yeah, it's been awesome.
So we hope that you continue to work on and think about um, and don't let the, the learning uh, from yesterday or the learning that you're going to be doing if you weren't there um, stop with completing a worksheet. We have lots of activities and lots of worksheets for pretty much anything you could ever need um, in terms of strengths or purpose or anything like that. But we know that the, the real value and the real impact happens when you take this and you have conversations. Um, you, you really think intentionally about the integration of purpose and strengths and well-being and, and engagement in all of our lives. And, and, and I would just encourage all of you to share your purpose statement with someone close to you that knows you well to get feedback. Um, think through the questions we're going to send out um, and we actually we'd love to hear a little bit about how this process goes for you as always we love when we get emails from people about um, about the work that they're doing in their own lives um, in terms of purpose and strengths and so yeah we'd love to hear from you and yeah. and our plan for future Jen and Millie's is to be determined <laughs> to be determined <laughs> I'm going to rely heavily on that palm tree there because we don't yet know what we're going to do. We want to make sure that we can have it recorded. We want to make sure that um, we do it with the same quality that Hannah has been um, providing for us. So, to be announced. Mm -hmm. All right. Take care.